So you're probably wondering why I'm in the freezer at minus 10 degrees, um, kind of freezing my butt off. But it's leading into our species spotlight this week, which is the snow leopard. And of course, snow leopards live in the mountains at temperatures very close to this. So let's take a look and uh, you guys can enjoy meeting the snow leopard. Okay, so in all actuality, the snow leopards don't really live in the snow that much. They live more on the, on the rocky faces of the mountains. And they're found anywhere from ne Nepal, Pakistan, Afghanistan, even China, different, different areas in that region. And they live in the very steep mountains, and that's where their prey lives. Their main prey is the ibex goat. So Big Cat Rescue, we actually have two snow, snow leopards. We have a male and a female. And our male has been neutered. Uh, we, we're not going to breed these guys. The problem is really not uh, breeding them in captivity because snow leopards, believe it or not, do breed fairly well in captivity. And as a matter of fact, the two snow leopards that we have, Hercules and Chloe, they were pretty much unwanted snow leopards. They were, they were considered surplus, so they were both offered for sale. Uh, Chloe was even given to us. So the problem is not that they won't breed in captivity. We could have lots of snow leopards born in captivity. The real issue is their habitat in the wild. And as what's facing all of the wild cats, as their gene pool gets limited and limited by more and more of the animals being killed off, it's really just a matter of time. We've got to preserve their habitat, but at the same time, we've got to maintain this genetic diversity. And as the animals are getting wiped out, not an easy thing to do. So the features of the snow leopard that make them unique, besides their ability to come up and really scare you, is see those huge paws? They're really good for walking on the snow. And the snow leopards have little ears. See how far they are set back on their head? That's so when these guys are hiding on the rocks and the, and the cliff ledges, they can just sort of flatten their ears back. Or they'll look just like another rock or another ledge. They'll blend right into the stones and the surroundings. Also, the nostrils on the snow leopard, they're actually much deeper and they're much, they have much larger nasal cavities inside. And the reason for that is they're living in these high elevations where there's a, a, a real lack of oxygen. So they need much more nasal area to intake this oxygen and actually to draw the oxygen from the very thin air. And so the snow leopard's tail, although it looks very fluffy, it's actually heavily muscled and the snow leopards will use that as a rudder or a counterbalance when they're chasing prey up and down the sides of these very steep inclines. So one of the advantages that we have when we're tracking animals in Florida, we have lots of mud, we have thick brush, you can hear the animal moving around. There's evidence that they were there. The brush gets trampled down. The animals will use trails. You can set camera traps. And unfortunately, the snow leopard researchers, they don't have that same advantage. We're talking about looking for animals that blend in perfectly, and they're on snowy, rocky mountainsides where they don't leave tracks. And if they do, they're blown away very quickly. Where these animals are just walking on gravel and rock where there's no evidence or tracks left behind. So one of the ways that the snow leopard researchers are using to track these animals right now is by a GPS system, which is a global positioning system. And they actually use satellites to track these animals. And recently, for the first time, a female wild snow leopard has been radio collared, and they're tracking her progress. And they're able to find how far she moves. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest problems that the snow leopard researchers have is actually determining how many numbers of snow leopards are left. Because a lot of times, these animals travel so far that they're thinking they're counting different animals when in reality it's one animal that has just moved a really long time, actually moved into another territory or another mountain system. So you might wonder what you can do to help the snow leopards, especially if you live in Florida like we do at Big Cat Rescue or if you're in the United States. And there's an easy way to do that. There's an organization called the Snow Leopard Trust and you can find them at snowleopard.org. And their goal is to preserve snow leopard habitat and basically let the snow leopards live there uh, without interruption. And what they're doing is working with the, the people that live in those areas, the people that actually live where there are snow leopards and where snow leopards affect their lives by taking goats from their herd and really affecting their monetary income. So what the Snow Leopard Trust is doing is, is they're buying products. They're buying products that are handmade in the villages, again, in these areas where there's snow leopards. And the sale of these items, are it, it's dependent on whether snow leopards are killed or not. And now when the farmers might lose a goat or one of their animals to a snow leopard, they're very unlikely to run up there and kill it because now they know if they kill that snow leopard, their loss of income from not being able to sell you know, their goods is going to be way more than the cost of that one goat. Whereas in years past, it would be devastating. And they've also found that the approach of a bunch of non-local people going in and saying, don't kill these animals no matter what they do, doesn't really work. You have to make it economically feasible. You, know, you have to make the snow leopards worth something. And that's what the Snow Leopard Trust is trying to do. 
Go to their website. Again, it's snowleopard.org. It's a great place. Uh, it tells you all about how you can help snow leopards. And it's amazing, just amazing, at what a little bit of effort can really do across the whole world and really save the future, change the future for the snow leopards.